Madhouse Radio, your home to everything biker, biker news and discussions of the day, and now, the Motorcycle Madhouse Mayhem Evening Show with James Hollywood Machikari, Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, only on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all major podcasting platforms. Bookmark Motorcycle Madhouse Radio on your favorite mobile app now. Rock on! What's up, everyone? How you guys doing? Welcome to the show. Oh, we got another one. It's Friday, baby! Yeah, it's Friday, and boy, you know what? Thank God. I did all the charging system uh, checks on the bike. All that's going good. It was just that stupid-ass Harley-Davidson battery, and I just bought it last year, man. Uh, So it went kaboot, got it back going on. Uh, ready to ride again. Also, man, I'm pretty damn aggravated right now. Uh, I got this email, and I open it up, you know. Dude is going off from the start, man, from Jump Street. He calling me uh, all kinds of propaganda for motorcycle clubs. Motorcycle clubs are nothing but gangs. And the reason why he was going off was... I guess, yes, I guess, and I can't say to clubs, uh, that stuff's confidential, and it's allegedly, uh, I like to say, you know, it's not proven, but I guess a one percenter came up and jerked his shit off, you know, jerked his, uh, I guess, pop-up club colors, and, you know, he got a smart mouth, and, uh, you know, a beating ensued, I, you know, allegedly. And this guy writes me going off about it. It's like, I'm sitting here. What in the hell do I have to do with it? And what the hell did you expect when you were running around with this patch and not doing the the protocol and the tradition and all that stuff? And it was like, and the dude straight out said, well, you know, I called the cops and blah, blah, blah. I was like, what the hell is wrong with this freaking scene now? You know, this guy's going off on me on email. I had nothing to do with it. Call me a propagandist, all that crap. And, you know, we have a constitutional right. And this guy took my stuff. And then he went on to beat me up. I was like, dude, crybaby crap. I've always said 100% that... If you wear a patch, you better know how to defend it. You know, when you put on three-piece patches with the Rockers claiming a state or a city, you're opening yourself up. How many times have I had to say the streets are a lot different than the Internet? I guess the guy was in his 20s or something because just the way he was talking and emailing uh, those different types of words, you don't spell them out and all that stuff. Uh, But can you believe he wrote and said he called the cops and that uh, I'm nothing but propagandist? That's a sad state of affairs in this scene right now. And if you're watching, dude, screw you. (sighs) Go over some of these other channels, maybe learn about protocol uh, a little bit. I don't know what to tell you. But if you're wearing a patch and, you know, you call the cops because you got an ass whoop and you got a black eye, what is wrong with you? Did you watch too much TV or something that you think that wasn't going to happen to you? A lot of people are sick of things like this right now. Especially when clubs are being blamed for this riot starting, that riot starting. Their names are in uh, the mainstream media's, you know, evening news now. Do you really think they need any more problems because you putzes go start problems, man? That's the reason why, you know, other clubs want you, where you're locally, they want you in the clique. That way, people don't act a damn fool. That's always been the way it's been done. It is nothing about control. It has to do with people don't want you bringing heat on them. 
And if your patch was taken and you're beat up, well, it's because you probably ran your freaking mouth. Uh, but there had to be a reason behind it. The design of your patch, the name of your patch, the colors of your patch was too similar to somebody else that already had it. Jesus, man. Grow up. If you're going to be... This is a man's freaking game, man. There is no freaking space. There's no freaking uh, whining and crying in this type of lifestyle. What did you guys... What did you have? Maybe the, uh, a couple guys or something? You call... You slap the patch on? Called yourself a club? And, uh, you know, the... First... Learn how to write a damn letter, man. Hey, I don't speak the greatest, man, and I'll be the first one to say that because I'm always trying to hide an accent that I have. But at least I can spell and write, you know, write out the whole damn word because you look ridiculous. Again, I can't say the club, but it was one that was out on the East Coast. So, I don't know what you're doing, dude. You know, I like get over yourself. And I think that has to be a lesson <laughs> to people that this stuff is taken very serious. What you hear, what you see on the internet does not translate to what's going on on the street. I guess old boy had to learn the damn hard way. But what I find hard to believe is... A one percenter just going up to you, taking off your stuff, pounding you and stuff like that without a good reason. Most of the time, they're just going to say, hey, man, that ain't cool. Take it off, uh, you know, and explain why. You know, crap, maybe, you know, most of the time, if you ain't law enforcement related, they'll say, hey, man, why don't you come over to Clubhouse? We'll sit down. We'll talk about it. Get this done right for you. That is usually the first thing that's done. Not getting an ass whooping. So you must have said something stupid or had an attitude or threw up that it's my constitutional right stuff. That stuff don't fly, man, because you're, you're disrespecting people that put in probate time. They put in hang around time. They really work for that patch. They put, put the blood, sweat, and tears, the early mornings uh, you know, running around uh, with their head cut off when you just come up with a design, throw it on your back and think you're all cool and stuff. And then you wonder why people get all upset. But again, I, you know what? I've never heard of this where the first time around, you know, they just beat you. You know, if they did that, that hey, that's on them. That's the way they do things. But uh, you know, usually they're going to have a sit down with you and they actually try to get it right because, uh, you know, everybody knows membership in clubs are down. They know it's down. So they're going to try to get people who are interested in the lifestyle into the scene. Because I know damn well, one percenters, they, you know, they love their support clubs. And I don't care what law enforcement has to say about support clubs. I don't care what many people have to say about it. You know, one percenters are close to their support clubs. And the support clubs are real close to the one percenters because they know not everybody can do that life. So what's better? Get you a support club. Get it done right and party with everybody. That's all every, anybody's looking for. Have everything, you know, in one place, you know, like a confederation or something, because there's a lot of that. And that's another thing. If it was done right with the One Percenter Club, where you sit down, you talk, get it done right, then nine times out of the ten, you're going to be part of the COC with them. And then a big world opens up to you. Where you're going to other clubs, you're partying, the whole nine yards. So, your email's ass nine. You know, I don't know how many times I'm going to say that, man. That was the, for all the time that I've been doing.
doing this. That was the most bogus ass nine email I have ever received. Now he says, you know what? Law enforcement motorcycle clubs don't treat people like that. And you guys wonder why the law enforcement motorcycle clubs are starting to grow and people are going to them instead of the, you know, the one percenter side, the blah, 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 blah. Now, you know what you're getting involved with when it comes to a law enforcement motorcycle club? You're a sheep. You're a guinea pig. They're the real propagandists. They are fake. They took an oath to protect and serve. They're the ones who go after bikers. They profile bikers. And then they want to be bikers. They want to play that part. That's who you want to be a part of? Something fake? I would think if you wanted to do a club that you would want to be around the real deals, man. But because you didn't do something right, you went against decades of tradition and again, probably ran your damn mouth. You got the consequences and now it's everybody else's damn fault but your own. How does that even make any sense? What kind of man are you? Maybe you should go join a women's club, man. Because you're whining and crying enough. And I should be the last one anybody calls a propaganda machine for clubs. Me doing biker news, I cover the news going on in the scene. And that pisses a lot of people off. That's not being a propagandist for clubs. You know, I see some, you know, I mostly commentate on... What I see in front of me. One of the things I do is I won't read the article. Yeah, I'll read the headlines and then cover it with you guys. That way it's fresh. That My opinions are fresh at that point. I'm reading along with you guys. So, oh, that propaganda stuff, man. Oh, that pisses me off. <laughs> you know, especially when everybody's pissed, but a lot of people don't understand that. You know, I got com people complaining about the titles. Well, what do you want me to put for the titles, man, for what I'm covering? I put coverage of, I started doing that because you whiners. And whatever it says behind that coverage of, that's who is in the show. Propagandists. <laughs> God. You act like I'm MSNBC or something for the freaking club scene, man. You did something wrong. Own up to it. Don't cry about it. But I can already tell what kind of person you really are when you said that crap about law enforcement clubs. That just shows you're weak, man. That just shows you can't take an ass whooping. And go back to them and say, you know what? I was wrong with what I said. I'm new to this stuff. Can I have a sit down? Can we discuss this? Or even maybe, hey, can I hang around, learn about this? Maybe join one of your support clubs instead of trying to start something. Because it's a lot damn harder to start something than it is to join something that's already there. Go back to them like a man. Yeah, you took an ass whooping. But say, can I have a sit down to try to fix this? Because I this is something I really want. They're going to give you a ton of respect for that. A ton of respect. Because you handled this whole thing like a man would. Hopefully you're not stupid enough if you do ever see them. That you say, well, I wanted to talk to a law enforcement club or be some kind of bitch like that. Because then you're going to get ass whooping number two, man. Freaking ridiculous. How stupid can you really be? And that just shows you the mentality when you look at some of these people that comment on these stations, man. On these uh, 
people's channels, all that stuff. That's why I say it's really dangerous if you really don't have the experience to be teaching protocol. Because these are the type of people you're reaching. You're reaching some ignorant freaking morons. And it's not healthy. It's dangerous. What You know what? My biggest fear with the protocol stations, and again, I address, you know, because people want to come back and say, well, you refer him to BD, and I always say, well, he's a national uh, president. He's dealt with clubs all over the country. He knows what's up. But my biggest fear for protocol channels is they're giving this advice out. One of these Dean Bats like this got their ass handed to them. And next thing they do is not only run to the cops against the clubs, but they come after the channel because, well, this guy said this is the way I should do it. Or this guy said, and we all know we had one of them out there, screw what clubs say. Screw that protocol. Screw that tradition. And they believe it. And next thing you know, an incident like this happens. Now they want to sue everybody. Which, hey, you know what? You can, this is a First Amendment thing, just so you guys know. Uh, you know, just like when you have uh, used the Fair Use Act for distribution, which we fall under. Uh, but... It can cost you a hell of a lot of freaking money in lawyers and court costs, even though they ain't going to win. But sad state of affairs. So guys doing the protocol channels and all that type of stuff, be careful, man, because you got some freaking morons following you. Hopefully this guy didn't say, hey, and this might have got him reason why he got slapped and beat up. Hey, this guy on this YouTube channel said this is the way you do it. Or they said I didn't have to. I guarantee maybe that's one of the things. Other than that, I uh, what I can think about is he got an attitude. Or he tried that Constitution argument crap. That's the only thing I can think of. Only thing that would have led to that. So, what do you guys think, man? That is a hell of a way to wake up before doing a damn show is to read something like that. Also, let's get back to the bike, man. Uh, there was a question on the motorcycle. You know, with how old it is, with how many miles, and blah, blah, blah. I actually bought it from a dealer who ran all the pre-checks. I even paid him to go really in-depth on the bike. And, you know, that was just in the background before I knew it was just a battery because I always make sure you check that charging system, uh, the whole nine yards, see if anything's defective. So, uh, but yeah, I paid for the freaking service. I better got it. I paid for freaking $1,300 for freaking uh, cam tensioner shoes. And got the hydraulics put on it. So, yeah, the bike better be freaking good. Uh, but, man, it just t it just shows you the type of people I got to deal with, man. You know, do I feel sorry he got beat up? I'm going to go back to that because it's really bugging me right now. Do I feel sorry for him? I don't think so. I don't think so. And that's something, you know, I don't like violent. Well, you know, it is what it is. Uh, it, it's upsetting that, you know, a guy goes out there, he wants to be part of the club life, but you got to do something right, man. And you got to understand there's no mercy sometimes when it comes to this type of stuff. Because again, a lot of freaking people take this serious. So hopefully you guys uh, went over to, uh, Hollywood and China Dow's evening shows, new YouTube channel, seen a bunch of you guys over there. It was a hell of a chat, hell of a chat. We did, uh, episode two, which had to do with, uh, racial, uh, relations, some stuff that I'm about to talk about actually here on the show with, uh, COVID with the, uh, Sturgis stain. 
uh, and we just went off, man. It was a good damn show, man. A lot of interesting comments. Thank you guys for the feedback and stuff. But uh, let's get to the news. Hi, I'm Hollywood. And I'm China Doll. Listen to the Hollywood and China Doll evening show, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all major podcasting platforms. And don't forget to subscribe to our brand new YouTube channel. Rock on. Welcome back. There we go out of Fox 13, Tampa Bay. Biker from Minnesota dies of COVID-19 after attending Sturge's motorcycle rally. Now, this is the first death that they can trace to Sturge's. You know how the media was going off about this was going to be a Petri dish of COVID-19, that the bikers were all wrong, this event shouldn't have happened. Well... It ended last month, um, am I correct? I'm just asking. It ended last month, and this is the first death. And out of 460,000 people, I guess, estimate that uh, showed up to the rally, this is the first death? Huh. A Minnesota man in his 60s who attended the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally in his 60s in South Dakota last month, and I thought it was only a two-week type of deal. Uh, between onset of symptoms and stuff, has died from COVID-19. He is the first reported death from coronavirus associated with the event. He has, and listen, listen, he had underlying conditions. So do we know if he died of COVID? Hmm. Uh, again, let's see here, more than 460,000 people attended the rally between August 7th and August 16th. Despite the ongoing pandemic and fears, it could become a so-called super spreader event. The turnout was larger than authorities expected, but smaller than in 2019 before the coronavirus outbreak. And by the way, I don't want to uh, forget this. We are having that contest. Long Rider is sponsoring it for the person who has the most miles within the week uh i'm gonna try to get long rider on the program to talk about this because i really wanted to uh, you know take off you know get back to uh what's happening with the riders and stuff out there uh at least 260 people in 12 states tested positive 260 out of 460,000. you figure out the percentage on that plus one death uh, tested positive for the virus after going to the rally, according to analysts from the Washington Post. Yeah, I believe them. Yeah, that's not the source I'm going to get my freaking news from, you know. Uh -uh. Nope. Uh, and the North uh, Dakota-based forum news service, maybe that one because it's locally. At least 105 of those cases involve South Dakota residents, according to the state health officials. So, out of 260 people, over half of them were residents of South Dakota. Hmm. Minnesota has the second most with 49. Uh, local officials scaled back the event, canceling city-hosted aspects and cutting spending on advertisements. Uh, so, you shouldn't get that much in tax revenue. You didn't put it all in. Everybody else did. They conducted mass testing to get an idea of the virus's impact. The Sturges attendee's death was one of seven reported in Minnesota Wednesday, so there were seven in Minnesota. We all want to get life back to normal. Mass will help us get there. That's what the governor says. Uh, he has pushed state residents to wear masks in public to try and slow the virus. Uh, especially with the summer waning and cooler weather looming, which it could be a problem. Uh, one thing that I actually have to say, and a people are going to punch me in the balls for this, wearing a mask and social distancing has been a good thing, not only to stop the spread of this thing, but the flu season, baby. Uh, I think it's going to be really helpful during the flu season, uh, you know, because people know to wash your hands and all that stuff before this. You know, the flu was pretty bad this year, and it killed a lot of damn people. So maybe that is a benefit of this. At least three potential coronavirus vaccines have reached the final U.S. testing stage so far. 
Uh, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention suggested they could be ready for distribution by November 1st, and that is the fastest that a, a vaccine has come to the market. Uh, I don't know about uh, the vaccine. I really like waiting to see how things work before that. Continuing on the story, I really like this one, uh, TrendingPolitics.com. Uh, it's not a mainstream thing, but it has a really good article about this and puts it in real good contrast. Turns out the Sturgis Biker Rally was no COVID super sputter after all. No matter how much we would like to change the minds of all Americans who have been brainwashed into believing the COVID-19 as a planet killer... No single news story is going to do that. Changing or rather easing minds will take time and a series of reports before those folks will come around and realize that the virus isn't the global threat. The anti-Trump fear porn pushers, I love that fear porn, uh, pushers in the mainstream media have led them to believe. Now, I have to say, this is a serious damn disease. I've known some people who had this stuff, and I'd be the first one to tell you, hey, I don't want that crap, man. That stuff, I seen what it'd do. I heard what it'd do. Uh, it's not fake. It's not fake, man. I know there's a lot of anti-government uh, people out there, uh, but this is a serious disease, man, especially if you have underlying conditions, just like they just said with this guy out in, uh, he was 60 years old. Uh, so we'll start with this one. Left-wing Democrats and their fear pushers in the media bemoaned the fact that the town of Sturgis, South Dakota, which they did, this is factually true, decided to go ahead with its annual motorcycle rally this year in spite of the pandemic. Never mind that South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem Man, we need her to run for president. We really do. I love her. She's pretty. And she has a head on her shoulders, man. Christy Nome, man, for freaking 2024. A Republican never shut down the state to begin with. And never mind that the state has never been a coronavirus hotspot. Like a predictable broken record, they all said that the rally would become a super spreader event. Leading to death and suffering and pestilence on a biblical or a walking dead scale. Once again, the fear pimps, <laughs> dude, I love this, trendingpolitics.com, uh, in the Democratic Party were wrong. As PJ Media's Stacey Lennox noted Wednesday, the 80th uh, annual Sturges motorcycle rally took place from the 7th through the 16th in South Dakota. Attendance at the rally was slightly down at 462,000. That's still a lot of freaking people, man. Uh, a 7.5 decrease. No doubt COVID-19 fears played a part in the attendance reduction. Perhaps those with pre-existing health conditions declined to uh, attend. Uh, the panic certainly preceded the rally. Indeed, it was predicted that it would be a mass super spreader. Uh, the numbers are in and they are quite laughable. More people died from fatal crashes during the rally than the virus. You heard it. More people, and that's sad too, because uh, every major rally you have that. Uh, more people die from the fatal crashes during the rally than from the virus. The city of Sturgis conducted mass COVID testing. I think, uh, and it says right here, a total of 650 people took advantage of the free testing. 26 people tested positive. All of them were a uh, asymptomatic at the time of testing, so they didn't even know they had it. Uh, she says two takeaways, at least for Americans who have accepted the reality that COVID-19, while certainly no hoax, and it ain't a hoax, is also not the end of the world as we know it. You know, something that would be like an end of the, uh, the world as we know it is if Ebola or something like that started spreading all over the place. That's a nasty one right there. One, once again, we see that the virus is virtually harmless in healthy younger adults uh, who don't have underlying health problems. The disease is so mild in the vast majority of cases, people don't even know they've got it. You know, I, 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 I don't know about this disease is so mild. Maybe so, maybe, I don't know. Uh, not from what I hear and I've seen. 
Uh, a regional health correspondent for Fargo, North Dakota-based Forum News Service posted even more yawning uh, coronavirus numbers in a tweet. South Dakota reported uh, 88. Minnesota 35, 21 in North Dakota, 20 plus in Colorado, 10 in Wyoming, 7 in Nebraska, 6 in Montana, New Hampshire 6, Wisconsin 2, and Washington 1. And then he does give the sources for that information. In total, it appears as of August 28, 12 days after the rally, total 196 uh, positive tests were linked to the rally. Uh, you to check this one out again at trendingpolitics.com titled, Nope, turns out the Sturgis Biker Rally was no COVID super spreader after all. Now, this is a very interesting one here. Very, they, they crazy over in the Middle East and friggin' Europe, so it sounds like. Uh, Brie Bart, ex-president of a banned Turkish biker gang, allegedly behind a grenade attack. Yeah, don't mess with the Turks. Uh, the former president of the banned Turkish background, Osmania Germania Motorcycle Club, has been accused of being the mastermind behind a grenade attack on a uh, shisha bar in Germany. Uh, he was in court uh, on Monday to answer allegations that he masterminded the attack in the city in August 2016. The episode is believed to have been connected to a gang war between the Osmans and the Kurdish background uh, Boyhez biker gang. <laughs> wow. Getting stupid, man. Them two ain't playing around with their games, man. Uh, while the Osmans have been revealed to have links to the Turkish nationals Grey Wolves and have many Turkish background members, he's uh, said to have come to Germany from the Congo. Prosecutors allege that the two members of the Osman biker gang from Hays carried out the grenade attack. You know what? You, you're getting too serious, man. Grenades? You know, I remember during the 90s, man, they had la grenade launchers up in freaking... Uh, Canada with the uh, the rock machine uh, Hell's Angels war. A lot of people died in that war. Damn, this is serious. You guys too serious out there with this? Uh, intercepted phone data, including WhatsApp chats, reportedly revealing conversations between the 31 year old and the global president of the Osmonds, has also submitted in the case. Uh, they were banned in 2018 because of serious crimes due to its links between uh, the Grey Wolves and the AKP party of Turkish President Recep Aragon. The group has been accused of targeting Aragon's political opponents. The Grey Wolves in Germany have clashed with Kurdish groups in uh, recent years with many of the Kurdish groups. Man, you're talking politics and biker uh, stuff getting serious out there. Anyway, Bikers for Trump rally coming to Orange Beach. Uh, you're the rolling to remember, and that's what it is, rolling to remember, and we will... Okay, that's an old video. Uh, organized... Ex Organizer expect as many as a thousand bikers were converged on Orange Beach in October, just weeks before the November presidential election, to show support for President Trump. The Bikers for Trump parade and rally is set for October 17th. A flyer circulating on social media says the ride will start at the wharf and will end at Live Bait. Uh, this is October 17th, 2020, uh, at Orange Beach, Alabama. Now, let's go up the north a little bit. And this is Corey Graff's wall of shame, baby. Months after Calgary police officer arrested for hit and run, impaired driving, CPS admits to charges. A high-ranking Calgary police officer was charged with drunk driving and hit and run, Nearly four months ago, but despite other police chiefs releasing that type of information to the public, top cop Mark Newfield did not. Staff Sergeant Blake Hebart faces charges of impaired driving and leaving the scene of an accident following an incident in Air Dyer on May 9th, 2020. He was off duty at the time. On the evening, uh, 
Air Dry RCMP were called by residents after Hebart allegedly crashed into a fence and a tree. After the crash, he is accused of driving home. Shortly after, RCMP officers attended his house and demanded a breast sample. CBC News received a tip about the charges, which then were confirmed by Calgary Police. In the last two years, CBS has issued statements about three different officers who were charged for drunk driving. And in several other cases, when the officers were charged outside Calgary's jurisdiction, that information was also released to the public. You guys got a drinking problem up in Calgary, man. Uh, Jessup officer, oh my God, arrested on sexual assault charges. Here we go again. By WTOC staff, the Georgia Bureau of Investigation has arrested a Jessup Police Department officer on charges of aggravated so sodomy, sexual assault against a person in custody, and violation of oath in office, you think? Uh, Stephen Wright, 30, turned himself in to the Wayne County Jail. On Tuesday, August 18th, the Brunswick Judicial Circuit District Attorney requested the GBI investigate an alleged uh, allegation of criminal misconduct by Wright, according to the GBI. The investigation revealed that Wright engaged in non-consensual sexual contact with a person under his authority. According to the Jessup Police Department, on Wednesday, August 19th, the GBI met with Chief Lane at the Jessup Police Department to inform him of the investigation. Officer Wright was placed on administrative leave pending uh, the results. Uh, the post from the department says... Chief Lane states his department works very hard to hold officers to a high standard, and this form of behavior is unacceptable, you freaking think, and will not be tolerated. The Jessup uh, Police Department will continue to serve the communities. That is uh, the wall of shame. My God, these freaking people, I'm telling you. <laughs> Carrie here from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. Just to let you know about the place that has the craziest hats on the market. Apparel that's based all upon bikers, baggers, and brotherhood. And ladies, we didn't forget about you either. Between tank tops and baby doll tees, we have it all. Now just go to BaggerSyndicateCycles.com and check it out. Mwah. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari, host of Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem. Check me out over on Instagram at Insane Throttle Biker News and join in on the discussion over on our YouTube channel at Insane Throttle Biker News Radio Show. Oh man, you know what? This is the second video in the last couple of months. Uh, for those on the radio, it's real seamless how I do the show. But on YouTube and Facebook, they're actually watching what I'm doing recording the show. And usually I put up the graphics where they can actually see the story that I'm going over. And boy, I forgot to do that one again. So my apologies. <laughs> you know, I think it's just this freaking creep, you know, that I was talking about in the monologue. And sometimes when you're doing the radio show, you got that in the back of your head like... You know what? You just want to kick a pecker puller like that in the balls because of what he said and it gets you freaking aggravated and it didn't help. I read the email right before. Not making excuses. You know, I should have been, uh, you know, paying attention a little bit more. But I do apologize for not having the stories up on the screen. But... Let's go to my final thoughts on that Sturges thing. You know, some of the stuff I agreed with, some of the stuff I didn't. I don't agree that it's not a serious disease. Uh, a lot of people are going to push, well, underlying conditions this, underlying uh, conditions that. Uh, but some people, they don't even know if they have underlying conditions. Maybe it hasn't presented itself yet. And we can't freaking dismiss what is there, almost 200,000, over 200,000 people that died from this disease? A lot of elderly, yes. The youngins, not so many. Uh, kids, not so many. That's why I can't understand why they're not opening the schools uh, on a wide scale. But again, you know, I can't speak and I'm not going to be a hypocrite because I got my kid in, uh, you know, the over internet uh, deal with uh, online schooling, but that's just because I got underlying 
the wife does, so I don't want that crap brought home to me. Uh, when it comes to the health stuff, man, you ever get to that point where you're like, man, you like, you put the sign of the cross, you don't want nobody around you, that whole nine yards. Uh, but it is very good news out of 460,000 some people that there hasn't been widespread freaking uh, uh, spread of this stuff. You know, and that's saying something about bikers right there, if you ask me. Bikers are a lot smarter than the general public. If out of that many people showed, and only a few, and then there's the first death reported on September 3rd, almost a month after everything started, that's saying bikers pretty damn smart, man. They know how to keep their social distancing. They know the, how to wash their hands and all that good stuff. And the media never gave them credit. No, the media instead wanted to attack them. And that's something that ain't freaking cool at all, man. They attacked bikers like we were evil monsters. And I can guarantee you one thing. They will not be taking back what they said about us. Because, again, they group us into one segment, and it's all political, and they try to make us the bad guy. To me, they want to sell papers and stuff, but I hate that narrative. I hated the narrative when they tried to blame a club in Minnesota for starting all them riots when we know damn well what the hell happened out there. You know, it's like we're, uh, you know, a teeter-totter for them people. They want to make us into something we're not in the movies and TV shows, and then they want to report on us. And, you know, it's funny. They always, when it fits their narrative, they want to use law enforcement side of the story and not give clubs their side. See how hypocritical that really is? And hypocritical is something I've been using a lot lately. It's... it's Personally, sometimes I cannot understand how people can't see through a lot of the crap. Now, let's get away from the biker stuff for a minute. If you go on social media and stuff, you see posts from local news. That's where you really see the commie left coming out uh, and their supporters. And it's like, can you not see through this stuff, man? Do you not have a brain or do you have to be pulled around uh, by a pecker all the time where you can't think for yourselves? Did you know how many people were bashing bikers leading up to Sturgis because of what the media was putting out? There, Everybody was bashing on bikers. They weren't focusing on the good that bikers were doing. There's a lot of uh, charity stuff that runs up in Sturges. A lot of money is made up there. Talking about money, man, since Sturges didn't put the advertisement out, didn't put this or that out, I do not think they deserve any tax dollars from this year's uh, rally because they didn't do nothing to deserve it. Nothing, nada, zilch. So why should they be able to collect off of it? You know, that's one thing I hate about these big biker rallies. And, you know, I know people want to go to, you see me, my dream ride's the Black Hills, man. Haven't been up there. And I got to thank uh, a, wa a subscriber uh, who watches. I get to text with him a little bit. And he's going to actually show me around the Black Hills. Uh, I guess it's God's country. You know, I used to say uh, West Virginia and the Appalachia is God country, but I guess it's really beautiful up in the Black Hills. You know, I'd probably go a week before, check out the riding, get some hardcore riding in, and then, you know, break down and check out the Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. Uh, see what all the big fuss is, but I just don't see, you know, people going regularly to something like that because all it does is support people that they just want to make money off of you. They don't care about you personally. They just they see you as a dollar sign. Come on, what Sturges make in taxes each rally season? Over a million dollars or something like that? I don't think uh, any of the Sturges residents should be even charged any taxes, man, because the rally pays it for them. And that's a small-ass town, isn't it? Small-ass town, and they're making some bank up there. 
That's just like the Daytona area. They make bank, but what I like about Daytona is it's so spread out all over that corner of Florida, even in the middle of Florida. A lot of at that rally, a lot of people and a lot of businesses really do benefit from it. It's just not the town of Daytona that's benefiting from it. It's everybody in the area. Now, I, you know, I can't say if that's the case in Sturgis. I know Deadwood does. But, again, I have no experience to talk about that because I'm not up there. I never went to it. You know, I haven't gone to Laconia. Maybe, you know, it's spread out with Laconia. Uh, I know uh, the one, uh, the what, the roar from the shore, the one that they, uh, you know, said that they're not having no more because of the big bag biker gangs. Uh, I know maybe the towns around there make money off of it, but I just don't like the fact that uh, with Sturges that that town is making so much money, not only from the taxes, but from all the tickets they hand out, all the freaking arrests they make for some stupid crap, man. You can't even show your boobies. What the hell is a biker rally without showing boobies? Yeah, I know, you paint all those cool designs, and there are a lot of cool designs out there. Uh, but uh, sometimes you want to see some nipple. You know, you want to see those areolas. But they don't even give you a chance to do that anymore. But I am glad that bikers have found their way around that damn shit. <laughs> Again, us bikers are smart, man. We're, you put a rule up. And you're going to find your way around that rule somehow. <laughs> uh, but you know what? I also mentioned that I'd really like to get a ride together. For all Insane Throttles freaking subscribers, get some type of ride. And everybody hang out and do it the old school way. No motels or hotels. None of that. Have a bike, have maybe a two-man uh, tent or a tarp, throw it on the side, camp out after a long day's ride. Maybe we can do uh, a Great Lakes tour where we start in uh, one place and go around the lakes. That's a damn good ride. Uh, or we can ride some of the Route 66, something like that. Maybe make it uh, a week uh, event where... You know, at nighttime, we stop, party, throw on the campfires, and the rest of the time it's riding and doing some sightseeing and stuff. You know, not visiting all kinds of bars and bar hopping. No, an actual ride. So this is where you guys are going to come into play here. Info at InsaneThrottleBikerNews.com. Send me ideals for rides. What you think it should entail. Some of the places where we can go. And, you know, a lot of people send in about their dream rides. A lot of good stuff. So, what do you think we should involve with an insane throttle yearly ride? I like the old school ideal, man, if you ask me. Go out there, get the twigs, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Start a fire. Uh, but anyway, man, I appreciate everything. Don't forget to visit Hollywood and China Dolls evening show over on the new YouTube channel. We put that up again for you guys because you wanted it. Some people don't listen to the Spotify or Apple podcasts where it's its main platform. Uh, love that you guys uh, listen to us real big on the radio. Really appreciate that. Uh, some people, you know, using the web with the radio, best suggestion I would give you is download the Spotify app, or it's free, or the Apple Podcast app. Just put in Motorcycle Madhouse, you'll see both shows on there. Uh, that's where most of our listeners uh, come from, is Spotify, the radio, uh, so you can do that. Just download it on your uh, phone. And again, it's free. And you can listen to our shows at work, all the good stuff. Uh, until then, guys, I'll talk to you later. You guys have a good weekend, maybe. I'd have uh, you know, a video might pop up on the weekend. Uh, go over to Instagram. I was talking about my bike over there today. Uh, help us get to 10,000 subscribers. We appreciate it. Talk to you later.
Hi, I'm Hollywood. And I'm China Doll. Listen to the Hollywood and China Doll evening show, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all major podcasting platforms. And don't forget to subscribe to our brand new YouTube channel. Rock on. So you want to know how to support the show? Go over to our support store and get some awesome looking clothing. We got rock on hats, rock on shirts. The rock on hats are embroidered. Get your exclusive merchandise now. Rock on. Don't forget to go over to HarleyLiberty.com. Get all your motorcycle club news. What's happening in the scene? We have a new article or articles every single day over at HarleyLiberty.com. And don't forget the sister site, BikerLifestyleMagazine.com. If you're into all that kind of manufacturer motorcycling news, Motorcycle rallies and bikers help in the community. Motorcycle club editorials and more. And don't forget to visit us on Facebook. Get involved in the conversation. Watch videos done on Motorcycle Madhouse and more. Also, we have Instagram. Yes, Instagram. We have material that is not seen anywhere else. So don't forget, get on our platforms, check out your daily biker news. Rock on! Hey guys, this is Kara from Bagger Syndicate Cycles. I just want to let you know about a place where you can get the greatest apparel, top of the notch, all about baggers, bikers, and brotherhood. And ladies, don't you worry, we didn't forget about you. Check it out at BaggerSyndicateCycles.com. Your show is now available on Spotify and all major platforms, including iHeartRadio, iTunes, Stitcher, and more. Don't forget to become a subscriber on any one of these platforms so you can be notified right away when our weekly episode is uploaded so you never miss an episode. Hi, this is James Hollywood Machikari. Join our YouTube channel and get Motorcycle Madhouse and tons of videos related to the bikers. Join now by subscribing for free and become part of the crowd today. Always free and always entertaining. Don't forget to visit us at www.harleyliberty.com for your daily biker news. Rock on!